Welcome to Learning Lad and in this video we will see how we can write a simple C# -sharp application to check whether the number entered by the user is a prime number or a composite number. Now before writing this program, let's take a look at what exactly is a prime number and what exactly is a composite number. A prime number is a natural number greater than 1 which is completely divisible only by 1 and itself. For example, let's take a look at the number 3. This is a natural number greater than 1 and if you look at the numbers which will divide it completely or the factors of these 3 are 1, 2 will not divide 3 completely and the next number is 3. So since this number 3 is greater than 1 and it is completely divisible only by 1 and itself, we can say that this 3 is a prime number. Similarly, if you look at the number 7, then the numbers which will divide this number 7 completely are 1 and 7. So this 7 is a prime number. Now similarly, we can uh, look at uh, the number like 6. Now this number 6 is greater than 1 and if you look at the numbers which will divide it completely, then they are 1, 2, 3 and 6. Now in this case we can see that there are numbers other than 1 and itself which will divide this number 6 completely. So this number 6 is not a prime number. If we have a natural number greater than 1 and if it is not a prime number then we call that number as a composite number. So if you look at these things then we can say that a prime number has only two factors one and itself and a composite number has more than two factors. Now if you look at a number like 1 then if you look at the numbers which will divide it completely then it is 1. So here for this number 1 it has only one factor it is divisible only by 1 but it is not a prime number because prime numbers needs to have two factors. It, so it is neither prime nor a composite number. Because for a number to be a composite number, it needs to have more than two factors. In this case, it has only one factor. So one is neither prime nor composite. So let's see how we can write a C sharp program to check for this. So here I have created a console application and I have already written some code. I have mentioned that we will be using some features which are defined inside the system namespace and then I have created my own namespace and I have called it as prime and then we have this class program and inside this class we have this static void main method which is the entry point of our program. So here in this program we are going to ask the user to enter a number and then we will store it in a variable and then since the user is going to enter the number, he can enter anything like a negative number or 0 or 1 or maybe he can enter a number greater than 1. So we will write the code to check for all these conditions and we will uh, display the appropriate message. For example, if the user is going to enter the number 0 or less than 0, we will say you need to enter a number which should be greater than 1. If the user is going to enter the number 1, then we will say one is neither prime nor composite. If the user is going to enter a number above one, greater than one, then we will check whether that number is a prime number or a composite number and then we will display the appropriate message. So now the logic that we're going to use in this program is we're going to ask the user to enter the number and we will store that in the number variable. You can give any name for the variables and then in the beginning, we assume that whatever the number that the user is going to enter, it is a prime number. And what we do is we set a flag or you know, we can use a boolean variable and we will set some value like is prime equal to true or anything equivalent and which will indicate that the number is a prime number. So in the beginning, we will assume that whatever the number the user is going to enter, it is a prime number. 
Now, the first thing that we do is we will check for the number whether the user has entered zero or less than zero. In that case, we will display the appropriate message. If the user has entered one, in that case also, we will display the appropriate message. And if the user has entered the number greater than one, then we will start checking whether the number is the prime number or not. And we can do that by dividing this number, whatever the number entered by the user, starting from two. So we will take the number entered by the user and we will start dividing this number from two. So first we will divide it by two and we will check for the reminder value when we do that. If we get the reminder as zero, when we divide the number entered by the user by two, it means that two divides this number entered by the user completely. So two is a factor of the number entered by the user. And what that means is since the number entered by the user has a number other than one and itself, which divides it completely. So this number entered by the user is not a prime number. So what we do is if we get the reminder zero, when we divide the number entered by the user by two, then we will change the flag that we have set in the beginning. So we will make each prime equal to false. And once we know that the number entered by the user is not a prime number, we will just display that message to the user. Now let's say we will get the reminder a non-zero value. If the reminder is not zero, what that means is the number two is not the factor of the number entered by the user or two will not divide the number entered by the user completely. So in that case, we will go to the next number, which is three. And we will check whether three will divide the number entered by the user completely or not. So again, we will check for the reminder value. And if the reminder is zero, then we come to know that three is a factor of the number entered by the user. So it can't be a prime number. So we will change the is prime flag to false and we will display the message. And for three also, if you get the reminder as a non-zero value, then we will go to the next number. And again, we will do the same thing and we will continue to do this. Now the question is how long we have to check for this if we don't get the reminder as zero. Now let's say we have a number 10. Now the range of numbers which can divide this number 10 completely. If you start including from one, then it is from one to five because we can easily say that the numbers six, seven, eight, and nine cannot divide this number 10 completely. And the number 10 will, uh, of course, it will uh, divide the number 10 completely, but we already know that one and the whatever the number is present, it will divide itself completely. So we already know that. So we will not going to check whether one will divide the 10 or not. And also we will not going to check whether the 10 or whatever the number is there, whether it will divide itself completely or not, because we already know that. So here, the possible range of numbers which can divide the number, uh, in this case 10, completely are from 2 to 5. You know, 2, 3, 4, 5, they can divide the number completely. So there is the possibility. Now, if you look at this maximum range, which is 5, it is actually the half of the number 10. So here, we have to continue to check for the possibility of uh, a number dividing the number entered by the user completely until we reach number divided by two. So after reaching this number divided by two value and still we find that the reminder is a non-zero value, then we can say that this number is completely divisible only by the number and itself. So it is a prime number. In the middle of it, if you find the reminder as zero or if you find out that uh, a particular number divides the number entered by the user completely, then we can say that that number is not a prime number. It is a composite number. So this is what we are going to do in this program and let's write the program for it. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we will declare the variables that we're going to be using in this program. So I'm going to use an integer type of variable and the first variable is for storing the number entered by the user. I'm going to call it as number. And then we need another variable. And that is for storing 
uh, whether the number is prime number or a composite number or prime or not prime so i'm gonna call it as is prime and we will be using it as a flag to indicate us whether the number is prime or not and we will set it to true in the beginning okay we assume that whatever the number that the user has entered it is a prime number now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to ask the user to enter the number so we can do that by writing console dot write line and we will write enter the number to check for prime or composite now after seeing this message the user is gonna enter a number so we will read that by using console dot read line and this console dot read line method will return the user input whatever the user is gonna enter it will return that in string form so we want the number in integer form so we will convert the user input which is in string form to integer form and we can do that by writing convert dot to int 32 okay now we have the number that the user has entered now let's start checking for this number whether the user has entered a number uh, 0 or less than 0 so we will check that by using the if conditional statement and the condition will be whether the number is containing a value which is less than 1 if it is true then we will display a message to the user by using console.writeline and we will say number needs to be greater than 1 okay after this we will check whether the user has entered 1 or not and the condition here will be number is containing a value 1 else if number is equal to 1 in this case we will display the message as 1 is neither prime nor composite if the user has entered a number greater than 1 then we will check for whether it is prime or not and then we will display the appropriate message so here the first thing that we have to do is we have to start dividing the number entered by the user from 2 and if you find out that the number is not divisible completely then we have to increment our number we need to go to the next number next number next number so we will use a for loop in here and I'm gonna create a loop counter variable and I'm gonna call it as divisor I'm gonna initialize this with a value of 2 and how long we have to continue this for loop that condition will be divisor containing a value less than or equal to number divided by 2 and after that we will increment the value of the divisor variable okay so now we have a for loop which will start from 2 and it will run up to number divided by 2 if the user is going to enter let's say 10 then this loop will start from 2 and it will run up to 5 now here inside this for loop what we have to do is we have to check whether the value stored in this divisor variable completely divides the number entered by the user so we will do that by using the if conditional statement and here we will write if number modulus operator divisor is equal to 0 that is when we divide the value stored in the number variable by the value stored in this divisor variable what we get as a reminder if we get the reminder as 0 it means that the value stored in this divisor variable completely divides the number entered by the user so the number is not a prime number so we will change our flag is prime and we will make it as false no it is not a prime number now once we know that this number is not a prime number we don't have to check for the next number for example uh, when this divisor variable is containing a value 2 if you come to know that okay this number is not a prime number then there is no need of checking for number 3 number 4 number 5 so we can stop this for loop here and we will do that by using the break statement okay if you get the reminder a non-zero value when you divide the value stored in this number variable by the value stored in this divisor variable then this if conditional statement will not be executed so our for loop will go to the next iteration and it will continue with the next iteration now once we come out of this for loop by looking at the value stored in the is prime variable we can say whether the number is a prime number or a composite number 
so we will use the if conditional statement in here and we will check whether the is prime variable is containing true or false if is prime variable is containing true then it means that the number entered by the user is a prime number and we will display that message by using the console.write line method and here i'm going to write the message as i'm going to leave a placeholder for the number is a prime number and then we will provide the value for the placeholder which is present in this number variable now if the is prime variable is containing false it means that the number entered by the user is not a prime number it is a composite number so we will display that in here in the else part okay now we have uh, written the program in here the next thing that we're going to do is we will run this program enter the number to check for prime or composite i'm going to enter 3 3 is a prime number press any key to exit i'm going to close that window i'm going to run it one more time and this time i'm going to enter um, negative number like negative 2 it says number needs to be greater than 1 i'm going to close it i'm going to run it one more time and this time i'm going to enter a number like 6 it says 6 is a composite number and one last time i'm going to run it and this time i'm going to enter the number 1 and it says 1 is neither prime nor composite so our program is working properly so this is how you guys can write a simple c sharp program to check whether the number entered by the user is a prime number or a composite number if you like the video then hit the like button if you don't like it then hit the dislike button if you want to say something then write that in the comment box for more tutorials like this do subscribe to the channel thank you for watching i'll see you later in the next video